What's up guys, Dickstuff here, and today we're talking about the patch notes for patch 5.12, Cyber Shadow. We've already done the live viewing of the patch notes, but this is going to be the review, a little more condensed, a little more down to the core, and a little more time to talk about specific things in the changes. So, we're going to through this, we're going to go through this as usual, and yeah. Unfortunately, it was already published five hours ago, six hours ago, but it was only published to us very much now, so... Hi Riz, if you're listening, please make sure those get published a little earlier so I maybe don't have to do two videos all the time. All right, uh, the new skins. Primal Fire Ares. This one uh, comes with a basically somewhat new model, smaller hands, chains with a different animation and everything. So it looks pretty cool. I like it a lot. It's not part of the tier 5 Bologna chest roll kind of thing. It's an individual skin, I would guess, in its own chest bundle or something. The other three skins is patch are all the chest rolls. One of them being Baroness Izanami, which looks very cool. I already said it, kind of has a Matt Moxie vibe to me, especially in game. Then we have the Shadow Spirit Apwash. It's actually called Anime Apwash as a file, interesting enough. Uh, that one I think looks really, really cool. It has really cool effects in game as well. A very creepy kind of style, and, but also this kind of like, I don't know, ghosty but spiritual but electric vibe it's it's really cool and there is stodgy cyberfox which i think looks a little bit better on the card than in game unfortunately but the in-game model is still decent i would say i was hoping it would be a little bit more like the card but it's still pretty good we can quickly go to the voice packs here and for that i would recommend turning down your headphones or speakers if you have them because sometimes it's a little loud i've been tracking this rare behemoth for days Slowing me down. You hear? May the spirit that protect me protect you as well. There are angry spirits all around us. Are you here to entertain them? A primitive backwards world where I can't use my tech? Guess I'm gonna have to improvise. My favorite, definitely the Baroness Izanami here in terms of voice. Right, then we have the Primal Fire Bundle. Well, that's your answer where how you can get this skin actually. Uh, it's a Primal Fire Airy skin and a Fire Recall skin and a Ward skin. There are gonna be announcer packs, an international announcer pack bundle, Russian announcer pack, French announcer pack, German announcer pack, Portuguese announcer pack, and Spanish announcer pack. Not quite sure how that will work. I guess that's just translated versions, but uh, I don't know why there's a pack bundle for them now. Who knows? We'll find out. Might be interesting, might be fun to listen to the game in Portuguese. There is additions to the awesome chest, Abyssal Executioner Chark, Dashing Deceiver Loki and Road Roll Hercules, and new skins in the Fantasy Point Store, Jack Ra Shibalanke, Grim Eclipse Hoi and Covered Ups Bastet, and Fantasy Point Tipping has been removed, which is interesting because the description here says, uh, removed from the game to prepare for a new positive player behavior reward system launching in 5.13. So with the mid-season patch, they're gonna release something where you can tip, favor, whatever other players in one way or another and say that was a good dude, have some extra points of some sort. Let's see if it works out. Let's see if it's uh, good. I liked the fantasy points tipping actually, even though it wasn't used very much, but I thought it was cool. But we'll see what we get instead. We have quite a few bug fixes. Guards should no longer fly in the air and die if they become stuck inside walls. Very good. And they will instead be brought to the closest safe position and placed there instead of being in the wall. Uh, fix an issue where stance changes, passive meter cooldowns didn't match the actual cooldowns. We had quite a few of those changes already. Fix an issue where Janos could ult out of bounds on the clash map. Fix an issue where daily bundle prices didn't visually update when coupons applied to them. Fix an issue where party leaders would get an incorrect invite decline pop-up after invites were accepted. Fix an issue where guard tooltips will remain on screen too long, covering UI on new screens. Clan roses will now show avatars. Then there are various spectator fixes. I'm not going to go them one by one, but hopefully spectator will work a little bit better again now. There's some extra console fixes as well. Uh, an issue where you could not scroll through all items in the item builder. An issue where players could got no UI feedback when trying to buy or rent a guard they could not afford. And an issue where players could get stuck in the tutorial. Then there are also audio adjustments like last patch already. In this case, it's Polar Vortex, Kukul Cards Ultimate Volume, Senpai Dachi's Abilities Volume, 
and then some voice packs have had remastering as well, being default to Renegade Willish. Actually surprising to me that one wasn't ever too loud or too quiet, I thought. Quetzalcoatlkan Kukulkan, Run X Mercury and Grim Shadow Nox. In Medusa's bad deathmatch, there were also some issues that were fixed. Don't think we need to go through them in detail, but yeah, that should be a little bit more fluid as well. And that brings us to the god fixes, first of all. Baron Samdi, this is technically a fix, but also a nerf. Fix an issue where Baron Samdi gained 10% additional power uh, while consuming a Baron's Brew. This was from like the PTS, this was like an earlier attempt, but they didn't really like it and they didn't want to implement it to the game and accidentally somehow got it in there. And fix an issue where life of the party couldn't be used while crippled. Kanunos fixed the missing FX on Cursed King Kanunos skin. He was, I think, deactivated for, for the time, the, the skin specifically. Chandabok fixed an issue where Chandabok could reveal enemies for longer than intended if he died while using his ultimate. Sexy Rexy made a video on that. Uh, Kali fixed an issue where Kali passive meter wouldn't let her choose a new target after respawning. Nike fixed an issue where lobby animations sometimes did not play correctly. Odin fixed an issue where Bird Bomb combo would not work as intended if he had evolved Heart of the Urchin. That's actually interesting. I think this is because Heart of the Urchin has its own shield and that sometimes doesn't work too well together, unfortunately, with other shields. The Morrigan fixed an issue where the Morrigan's item build would be missing if uh, when she used her ultimate. Change the Morrigan's ultimate so that she does not trigger death effects when reverting back to the Morrigan. Naja. Naja's Amillary Sash will no longer go on cooldown if interrupted before it has any gameplay effect. Also more of a buff than a fix in my opinion here, because that was something that was often an issue for him, that he got interrupted and then, well, had on cooldown and couldn't get anywhere anymore. Ra fixed an issue where Ra's model would turn strange directions while moving and basic attacking. The Morrigan, well, we already had that, why is this here twice, whatever. Mamana fixed an issue where Mamana's ultimate would not be extended in duration from taking hits. I think this was fixed once before, and it's actually weird that it keeps happening, but oh well. And Ymir fixed an issue where Ymir's ultimate would create debuff icons for his passive ability with different text. And that brings us to item balance. Item balance is not huge this week because uh, this is going to be what the lands being played on, and then the mid-season patch comes out with the bigger balance changes and new items apparently, so only some minor stuff here, and the more interesting stuff mostly next patch. Reinforced Truce, however, is interesting, I think, as the health here is increased from 75 to 100, and the max passive stacks increased from 6 to 7, and the same on Reinforced Griefs as well. So they were not used enough, they were just not as viable as the more aggressive choices, and they get a buff and return, and I think this could be cool, because I think Reinforced Truce weren't bad, there were just better options most of the time, but now if you want to have something defensive, it's, you know, a little bit more protection, a little bit more health, a uh, little bonus here and there. And then we have Traveler's Shoes. Oh, and also note, uh, the way it stacks, I think it stacks up with dots very quickly, uh, which is, if that's correct, also a better counter to Sumdi specifically, who has multiple dots. And then Traveler's Shoes increased magical power from 20 to 25, and Talaria Boots, same thing basically, increased physical power from 15 to 20. So a bigger buff to Talaria's power is usually a little more value in the physical department, you get more magical power overall, uh, either of them being a little more useful. The problem with Talaria, but also Traveler's, uh, is that if you play it in jungle, you should theoretically be faster than everyone else because you're faster, but you take longer to clear, so you're not actually faster with most characters. Okay. Some gods have such fast clear that it doesn't really matter, but most of the time it's an issue. So while it's very good on paper, it just doesn't work out that well, except when you're Mercury, who is generally uh, benefiting from movement speed and gets more power through that anyways. So this is mostly a Mercury buff, but he's going to get some nerfs later in this. So that kind of works out for him, I would say. Overall, we might see a little bit more of Travelers, I don't really think it's going to change much for, for supports, though, because supports 5 power really doesn't, doesn't matter that much. They might need some more changes, we'll see about that. They want to grip, increase magical power from 50 to 65. This is basically just to um, give the magical AA carries a little bit more, and we see a similar thing with Telekine's ring here, that gets his magical power increased from 70 to 90, and the power scaling on the passive increased from 8 to 10%. Now, the problem, even with AA mages, that's always been there, and I feel like always will be there, is that often enough, it's better to go into like an 80% power focused build and then have a little bit of attack speed, because you still have decent ability damage on at least both Kronos and Sol. Freya's a little bit of a different story here. 
uh, without having to focus on attack speed items. And then the attack speed is a bonus. You still get attack speed in other ways anyways through your abilities. And you don't want to focus on that because you just lose damage. Like, uh, for example, with telecans here, you, you get 10% of the damage. So if you have 500 power, um, that's 50 damage per basic. But at the same time, if there's another item that gives you significantly more power instead, then your abilities may deal, whatever, 70 more damage. And offsetting that damage can happen, but only if you get enough time to use those multiple basic attacks, which can be the case, again, but doesn't have to be the case. Because if, uh, if the, the, the basic attacks uh, are a relatively insignificant portion of your damage compared to hard-hitting abilities, that doesn't really matter. And if somebody's army is dead after like Chronos 3 and 1 and the basic attack, then the bonus damage from Telekines really might not be that impactful. So it's, it's a hard thing to balance, and especially with other items just being so relevant for uh, magical ADCs being lifesteal items like Bancrofts as well. It's hard to fit them in. But it's interesting that they're working on that. I'm expecting more of that in the mid-season patch possibly. And I think... At least for Aokuang, this is something that can always be kept in mind. Aokuang is still mostly being built around uh, ability damage at the moment, but he's getting better with basic attack focused builds again, and eventually there's going to be the turning point when everything is strong enough, and who knows? It may be reached, it may not. And that brings us to guard balance. Artemis gets nerfs, Artemis has been performing very well, and Caledonian Boar decreased CC immunity from 3 seconds to 1.5 seconds. Artemis CC immunity specifically, obviously. So, very straightforward. She had super long CC immunity before, now it's more reasonable, and that's it. Good change. Nothing to say. She's performing well, so good. Athena. Um, wait, now I'm actually confused. I, I will read this out because I thought this was on two abilities. Athena is the most contested guard in the entire Smy Pro League. She's been picked or banned in almost every game with relatively balanced performance. Athena is a popular pick, but she, uh, not necessarily a dominant one, so you want to be careful with adjustments. One key aspect of her kit that pros seem to use more often than the average player is her late game ultimate. They will often dive with Athena. Draw out, uh, drawing out a lot of cooldowns and poke damage, then return to base, heal and ult back into the fight. Want to slow down this specific strategy to help curb her power level only at the highest level of play. So I actually misread that. I actually thought on the on the live viewing before that the nerf to the damage was on shield ball. But I'm wrong, uh, apparently. This is on Defender of Olympus. Decreased base damage from 350 th uh, to 750 to 350 to 670. Which makes a lot of sense because that would, have, would explain the damage numbers as well. And the cooldown was increased from 110 to 90 seconds to 110 seconds on rank. So uh, flat value now. So a little less damage on the ultimate and a little longer cooldown on the ultimate. That's actually completely justifiable. Uh, and I understand that. That doesn't take away from her like clear or anything. Just takes away from her global presence a little bit and when... The global presence is there, she's gonna do a little less damage. But then, like, realistically, depending on what kind of setup you're playing, what kind of situation, how much CC there is and everything, there may be situations where it's reasonable to expect a Defender of Olympus to be confirmed, but there are also many situations where you will just have enemies disengaging in time because it is a very obvious visual effect around the character that you're ulting. So unless they have very specific lockdown, it will often not happen to do any damage. Like I said, in a kind of ordinated environment, this is maybe different. But so uh, on the base level, you will not feel much of that. Whereas the cooldown is something that everyone will feel a little bit. But the main point here is that you may consider not maxing Defender of Olympus earlier because there's no value in the lower cooldown. Uh, you definitely want to max the Shield Wall and the Taunt before that now and then possibly the ult over the one, I would say. Depending, really. And then we have Baron Samdi. Now, Baron Samdi not only gets some fixes, he also gets some nerfs, because he got a lot of stuff. So, Hysteria decreased bonus damage targets take while at max Hysteria from 25% to 20%. Vivid Gaze fixed an issue where the second beam hit did 30% of the first beam's damage rather than the listed 15%. It's interesting because I was told this was not a bug but intended, but well, 
Yes, it was not intended after all. Reduce magical power scaling from 80% to 70%. Wrap it up, fix an issue where targets with root immunity were still being rooted. And life of the party decreased base damage on hit from 140 to 420 to 100 to 380. Right. So, Vivid Gaze being nerfed means you only get a very slight damage boost over his two and max rank. Uh, first rank, is it's still more damage, I'm pretty sure. I think it starts off with 20 damage more, plus the second beam. But at max rank, I think Vivid Gaze should be 280, unless it's fixed as well. Unless that's 290 now. 280, then the 15% on top of that, whereas you will have 290 on the two. But the two, the two can, in a good situation, also hit the entire wave. The two is safer, because you don't have to go into the wave to place it close enough or properly, basically. You can place it from far away. And the two also heals you for more if you hit it on an enemy. So I think overall this may make the two the stronger ability to level instead of the one. So that's worth keeping in mind. A little bit of bonus damage off the top with the passive. Doesn't really matter, 5%. It's still so much damage. Uh, wrap it up. That was obviously a bug that was actually pretty strong against certain t characters like Cabracken. So... Um, yeah, I don't know how, how that happened. Um, apparently, the slow immunity was also an issue here that some guards weren't even slow immune, so that should probably be fixed as well, but maybe that was fixed together. And then the life of the party is still going to do a ton of damage because it's 15% of the target's max HP too. But, you know, it's 40 damage off the top and off the bottom, so at least in the early stages it does a little less damage. Oh, you level up quickly with this guy anyways. So, overall... A decent amount of nerfs to him that I think are very reasonable. I don't think he's going to be bad now at all. I think he's still going to be very, very strong. I'm expecting him to see further nerfs in the future, uh, possibly to his cooldowns because they're very short. But yeah, he's he's fine, guys. He's not destroyed. I don't know why some people think that he's destroyed now, but he's fine. Camel dots. Uh, weird set of changes, honestly. Increased base mana from 20, 220 to 240. All right, Essence Drinker increased lifesteal and healing bonus from 3% to 6% and Screech decreased mana cost from 60 to 80 to 50 to 70. So, you know, a little less mana heavy clear or a little more mana to do that as with. But the more important thing here is the Essence Drinker, in my opinion. I think this won't do too much for jungle, but a healing bonus is, is not to be underrated, especially with so many healers going around at the moment. 18% extra heal, I think. It should be three stacks, if I'm not mistaken right now. Though there's this weird thing with, with Camelot's two aspect, but I think it's uh, I think it should be the three stacks part. Uh, and if that's correct, then that also means that his solo sustain should be significantly better. Because he heals on his two, he heals on his three, and he will have life deal with his basic attacks, and all of that is doubled from what he had before if he gets the stacks in lane, which which is manageable, you know, it's not impossible. So, yeah. I'd, I'd not want to solo against him. That's all I'm saying. I think uh, it's a surprising amount of buffs. I think the mana changes would have been enough for these mana issues, but yeah. And I think, yeah, actually the pools count as healing as well, so his pools also heal for more. Pretty sure. Chernobog. Chernobog has been doing very well, especially at high level of play, and that is no surprise. Considering his attack speed zero, his global presence, his global slow, his everything. So what he gets is some nerfs. He gets a nerf to his attack speed, decreased attack speed buff from 30% to 70% to 20% to 60%. 10% off all the way, so you will feel that a little bit. Though it's not going to wreck him or anything. And Living Nightmare decreased shadow slow from 5% stacking 4 times to 4% stacking 5 times. I'm still of the opinion that thing doesn't even need a slow, but... It's a start. I feel like Chernobog probably needs some more nerfs. A little bit here and there. Fafnir. General increased base HP from 5 to 7. Uh, HP 5, sorry. From 5 to 7, so a little bit more. Regeneration while in lane. Underhanded tactics. Decreased mana cost from 70 to 60. Also indirectly a little bit more sustained for him here. That way. And Draconic Corruption. Decreased mana cost from 100 to 70. He does use quite a lot of mana, so I can absolutely understand that. Mm. And apparently he had slightly lower base HP than the rest of the Guardians, 
So I understand why that was changed too. Nothing crazy here. Not going to change the character ma majorly. Just, you know, a lot of touch-ups. I'm fine with that. Mercury made you look. Decreased base damage from 90 to 210 to 70 to 210. Lowering his LD game clear. So he is more of a late game character that has to come online first. And uh, also his early game pressure. Pretty much understandable. Not much to say here. Again, you also get a buff this patch anyways. And that's it for these patch notes. Like I said, the big patch will probably be the next one, the 5.13 mid-season patch, where we will probably get, apparently, a new uh, kind of encouragement, favor, rating, something system. We will probably get new matchmaking system. We will get guard changes. We will get new items and all that kind of crazy stuff. So looking forward to that. And also almost the next um, guard release at that point. Not quite, I think. There should be one more patch in between. But yeah, that should be that. And uh, nope, that was not your alarm, that was mine. And with that, thank you guys very much for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel the sub button with the bell, it really helps me out. Other than that, see you for the next one tomorrow. I think I'm not going to make another video today too, should be enough for today. Until then, Duke Sloth, out.